things I don't. All right. For some reason, the wrong thing was going on with the wrong. My inputs and outputs were confused. Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Ian and Sebastian. Yeah, the uh, the audio. It wasn't me. It was uh, Melon decided to switch my audio inputs for reasons that. I could not predict, but yeah, it's Monday and I, I had to reboot earlier. So maybe things got switched around, but I uh, should be, should be on now. And okay. I think I got confirmation. So something I wanted to, uh, to do, and I just couldn't wait till the end of the month. Cause I'm hasty like that is someone, uh, Duncan underscore chaos. And I'll show right now on Reddit in the, I don't know if this is a, a, a I, I guess, a not not exactly a well-known subreddit rpg underscore generators i some um, i think i'm a me i think i yeah i i'm 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 in it i don't really remember how i found it but it's got kinds of a bunch of stuff in here and, and something they've been doing for the month of july duncan under, underscore chaos has been linking to generators map generators now i could have waited at the end of the month but there are 18 here. Who knows how far we'll get in today. And that just leaves room for me to do this. Have a part two. I'm going to go in order. And I know some of these are going to be more famous than others. But really these kind of videos. I don't know. Your personal experience out there in chat land and beyond. May may not have touched even some of the ones that I consider to be well known. And someone may come and find this video down the line. Some kind of artifact of another time. And some of these may have been forgotten or they may not be aware. So it'll be good to go through and just check them out as they come. I think, I think the idea is most of these are online. We'll see. But let's start with day one. Asgard's fantasy map generator. Oh, oops, this is taking me to another. Okay, so they have individual posts as well. Okay. Well. I've messed around with this some. Oh, I think I I think I was messing around with things before, and that's why. Because this is really not how I don't think this is how it's supposed to look, but I had done stuff. Alright, so let's before I I wish there was a way. Can I reset everything? Uh hold on a minute. Let's see if I can reset this so that oh here we go. Monochrome default. Change it up. Okay, this is looking more. So Asgar has a bunch of generators of different things. It's probably worth... I'm going to go through this one, but I'll, I'll probably have to do another thing because there's probably enough in his... In, in I don't know, in their... Just their overall generators, there's a lot of really cool stuff. And I think now that they've, he, they're developing some kind of interactivity so that you can use things, merge them together. But we'll just look at these particular maps. We can see here we get a beautiful, pretty much a world map. Though you can do it on different scales. There's a lot of things in here. There is an Asgar's a, a Reddit, subreddit. So you can go in and get more. I don't know how good the help stuff is here. I've just kind of fiddle-faddled around with it. But you can get a lot of different things out of it. Here we're looking at an empirical, kind of empirical states view. We can also look at... Biomes, which may be more useful. Oh, did I turn it off? This is the thing. I might have turned stuff off. Did I turn off biomes? You're going to see here, just as I'm trying to get back to ba <laughs> basically the original. Oh, I don't think I turned it off. Maybe I didn't. So here we get biomes. The one thing you'll notice here, and this is something I've been struggling with as I'm trying to finish my hex map zine thing that's super duper overdue, is that from a biome perspective, which is generally what I think at these days we go for, at least I do when I'm looking at hexes and the symbology and kind of what could be there, and I'm trying to map it up with vaguely Earth-ish like stuff just because it makes sense and I'm used to it. If I'm going super alien gonzo, I suppose I could come up with my own alien biomes, but in the case of looking at kind of Earth-like things... Elevation really isn't a biome. In terms of mountains, you're just getting rockier and colder as you go, or colder and I guess less, is it less moisture? Basically, as, you, as, you're, as you're going from sort of wet and verdant to dry and 
along in a given temperature band, mountains are kind of changing it in an elevation band, which is why you have ice and rock at the top. And then if you're in, you get kind of alpine, which tends to be your sort of pine forest and whatnot, and kind of down given. It's not, it, it, if, I, and I mean biome in the very general sense. I'm not a scientist. Please, if you're a scientist, you can come in here and correct me. But on a basic level, mountains and hills aren't biomes in the sense we think of like grasslands and, and swamps and forests. They just, they exist. If you have a mountain in a forest, if it's a mountain, you're going to get up to a point where the trees just can't grow anymore. Then you might get lichens and other stuff and you get nothing in the same way. If you were going from Arctic where you have nothing down to down to whatever temperature is at the main level. So on a map like Asgard's, you're not getting, Oh, look, here's mountains. What you are getting is, the biomes that because of the temperature change, because of the altitude. So you can kind of intuit that, let's see, can we zoom in here? Yep, in the Principality of Nalandor, there's probably a mountain range in there or or a glacier. And this is where the difficulty I have sometimes, and maybe you get, you have as well, when you're trying to translate real world stuff into tools like hex maps is because the most hex maps, they don't give you the kind of they don't give you a lot of stuff you just get mountain symbol and you go great but w in terms of the mountain what does that mean is it, is it all mountain peaks is it all are we on the slopes of the mountains kind of there and, I, and i've definitely struggled with it not so much in i guess in trying to translate this stuff to sort of gameable things in my own game in my own personal hex maps i can figure it out and you can use different tools if you want to you can use colors probably colors with symbology would, would probably work the best so you could take this out and I forget what's brown brown is tundra okay so maybe those are glaciers never mind then or may see this is a thing like is it supposed to be tundra or is it mountain slopes I don't know because there's a bunch of these down here that don't like here or well this one in particular is not in the arctic land that's up there but there it is and there's green here so Presumably this is elevation. I wonder if we can look at elevation. Let's just see. We do have a height map. No, I don't want to edit the height map. I just want to see it. Select ensure element visibility is toggled on. Okay, I do want to. I do want it. Is it not toggled on? Can we get the height map? Well, how do I toggle it? Oh, I see. Maybe that's it. Right. Or biomes not toggled on. Well, biomes are toggled on. Is this the height map then? So this could be the height map. Maybe. Sea level. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. And I am not an expert. Some of these is going to be my first time looking at them too. And here it is, even one that I'm somewhat familiar with. that I can't clean I do monochrome that's probably okay this is okay so I think those colors were the height map so you could see here the darker the color the closer towards sea level you are and if in general if you're doing height maps and there's lots of tutorials out there to generate height maps a lot of folks it, prior to a lot of these tools coming out a lot of folks would use you could use GIMP or I'm more familiar with Photoshop. Photoshop to generate height maps. These height maps are, are all based on, uh, what's the word I'm talking about? Some basically kind of just random, random, uh, I forget the exact word, like blur or, or, or like, 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 like you, you generate like a clouds, kind of clouds in Photoshop and you use that from black to white and then you can scoop it out and do things with it. It doesn't give you particularly... It, it, you can get interesting shapes and you can get stuff that you can use. Most people would use these originally, and maybe they've expanded on now, but originally you'd see the big use points would be making kind of islands, big, small islands, because with an island type landmass from a fantasy RPG perspective, you're not particularly concerned with the kinds of things that we, that you, that you might become more evident with a 
continent, which is kind of where your mountains come out to the mountains sort of make sense in terms of the, the coastline, all these things that in real geography, they were often trying to mimic to one degree or another. There are these things that come in from the actual plates underneath moving and causing some things to go down, some things to be pushed up, all that kind of stuff will give you sort of relationships between places like your mountains and your coastline and all that stuff. But if with an island, I think you can, it tends to be more loosey goosey and that kind of approach works more better with islands. I don't know with Asgard's if they're just using kind of creating some sort of essentially random set of clouds kind of things. I, I know there's another word for clouds. I'm just forgetting, forgetting the forgetting the actual, I'd have to look up in Photoshop to remember what the, what the thing is that it does. But, uh, what was it like Perlin? Maybe like a per Perlin noise. I think it might be. In any case, you you see things in real world situations that tend to be more like okay, here's your coastline. There tend to be kind of mountains that kind of will vaguely follow, and it's not so much that it's following the coast, but these plates. If there's a plate coming in one way, plate coming in here, some stuff's getting pushed down, and there you get kind of their coastline. Some stuff's being pushed up, and you get your mountains, and you get these sort of relationships. But when you're doing Perlin noise. A type of generations you don't you don't get some of those whether you care about those or not hey all the more power to you but asgars in terms of what you're getting you're getting a lot of cool stuff well, i'm just going to look at a couple things here because i don't want to spend too much on here let's go back to default i kind of like the it looks good but you could see you're getting uh let's see ops let me go wait a minute where was i know layers you have all these layers that you can do. So I can take off height maps. I can bring back on, I can put on cultures. So you get a sense of these cultures. It's given us names, whether you like those names or not. I think you may be able to go in and change them. I've never really tried. You can look at it on a globe. You can change the sizing. You can add in your grids. Bum, bum, bum. You can add in your reliefs. What does that give us? Looks like, does that give us kind of mountains? So we could see here some of the mountains interesting thing here so you we do get a sense of hills and the mountains though and i guess this is an ice pack maybe what it is can i hide the ice oh i can all right that's kind of better so this does give you a better sense this is a mountain range these are actually hills they must be kind of tall hills So on and so forth. So that's Asgars. I will probably have to come back and do it. I think if you're looking for something that seems to be pretty darn robust, has lots of options, has a lot of things you can get lost in creating stuff, and I think you can link this to other, other of their sort of random generator type things, there's a lot here. And you can get a lot done at once. If you're looking to randomly generate out a whole, whole, you know, a whole world and get some things in here, you can Maybe one thing that I would say, I don't know if there's a way to change it. I would probably do something. I, you know, there might be areas depending on your world that you don't want everything because, you know, you look here and it's basically put empires everywhere, but in the ice, essentially, whether you want that or not, how you want to do that. looks like the red might be, I'm not sure what that is. Is that unknown? In any case, you get a lot going on there and they, and they're, and they're quite nice to look at. I don't know what their print options are and I don't know. I know if you go to the Asgars, uh, I forget their subreddit, you can, there's all kinds of more information in terms of if you want to export these and other tools. I don't think there's a way, I don't think there's a way to do layers to kind of layer some of this out if you wanted to pull it into something like Photoshop and mess around with it more. But there might be, there might very well be, I'm not sure. But it's it's a very popular one. Yeah, you go ahead and leave. And it does save your work in the browser. So it was saving my options that I've been messing around with before. So that's kind of, that's good, except for like me and I leave and then come back and I don't remember what I was doing. There's another list. I'll put that aside. Tavern and building map generators. Maybe I'll come back to that list if we happen to get through all 18. Oh, these are inkwell ideas. Nice. Here there'd be taverns. Let's just, I'm just going to pop a bunch of these open. Those are... Some PDF stuff you can buy from drive through, which I'm not going to do those because I'm not going to pay. So this is on here, here, here be taverns. So this is nice. I've not seen this one before. So some of these, like I mentioned, are going to be new to me. Oh, wow. So I guess I say, wow, because you get, you get names for them, which are cool. You get a little bit of information about them. 
which is neat. You get menus, which is cool. You get characters, and you get some rumors. Of course, the rumors, you know, you, you know your miles are going to vary. If you have, if you're looking for, a, a, you know, a tavern to go into some place that's very well known, you probably want to replace those rumors with stuff from your world. But if you're generating something from scratch, a brand new town, a brand new place, that maybe the characters are passing through, and you don't have a lot of fiction built up around it, then maybe adding some rumors is cool, and just having some fairly generic ones that you can twist and turn your own meaning is good. So the first on this generator, we got, uh, oh, we got locales. What is that? Oh, nice. Look at that. We can even, you can even pick for the terrain or whether it's in a dungeon or in a town or city. Oh, that's pretty neat. So we get Max Heinz's Tap House, the Charlatan and the Wayfarer, the Scat Tattered Striker. This tavern has no kitchen, and yet they have a menu. How does that work? <laughs> I, I mean, maybe they could tweak this. If I think it has no kitchen, then maybe you just have sandwiches or just hard breads or something. Ham and sausage stuffing. I don't know where they're, where are they baking? Where are they baking these baked hams if there's no kitchen? Or are they getting it from next door? They probably need to fix that or figure out what it means to, what it, what it means to have a kitchen, because clearly they still have a menu of not a kitchen. Notice... One thing that's also interesting is there's no, no actual drinks on the menu. I guess they just assume it's all going to be ales, ales and beers and maybe wine or something. But it would be neat, kind of an overlooked, I think, thing you can look at with taverns is what what are they actually drinking? Is it just your mead, ale, beer, or is there anything more interesting? Or even are those things interesting or just different than just generic meads and ale and beer? The tavern has a secret dungeon in the basement. That's good to know. Oh, this one's got several floors oh so does the max Hines. i didn't even notice oh ah and then the tattered strikers got just two floors this one on the menu's got mom's meatloaf who's mom though that's a good question sausage ball is sausage been in a ball i like it flatbread is a classic staple oh, i didn't do characters in the uh, let's see in max Hines's tap house we got rosher thom or tom a human librarian blake alma a dwarf roadmaster and Olivier Boone, an elf athlete. And then in the Charlton and Wayfarer, we have Summer Knight, gnome essayist, Marceline Potter, a dwarf bridal maker, and Rylan Molnieu, a human, human scribe. And in the Tattered Striker, who has on their menu, meatballs on rice, why no spaghetti, creamy mushroom stew, a thick stew made with a secret spice, pot roast, which is hearty and filling, and the characters are Callum Coleman, a half-orc doctor, Sumesh Allard, a human druid, and Ahsoka Mervor, a tiefling scholar. Let's see what kind of rumors we get out of this. So we've got a pack of wolves have been prowling about at night. Someone in town is a killer hiding from authorities. And the local general good shop was burned down. Some thing it was arson. I think that's <laughs> some think. I'm guessing spell check got the better of somebody there. And it turned what they meant to be some think into something. At the Charlton and Wayfair, the rumors are a murderer has escaped from the town jail. Ooh, could be connected to the someone in town rumor. You may summon any elemental at Druid's Nexus, and the blacksmith used to be a wizard. And then finally, at the Tattered Striker, the rumors are an undead adventurer saved a princess. It's said that bodies taken to Esmeralda's town may return to life, and ruins in the area show evidence that there was a battle fought long ago. All very cool. And we've got some more down here, but... I we got a bunch, but I'm not going to go through all of them. What I do want to do is I want to look at what the what it means when we go to details. What do we get? Oh, look at this. Bum, bum, bum. All right, so on the details, ooh, and we have some option to print the map. What does that do? Oh, it just gives us, okay, cool. It just gives us an isolated map to print on. Nice, nice. We get stats about the different characters. I don't know if stats, but we get some more about them. Rush your thumb has a fiery temper. temper. Their, their ideal is they only feel alive when searching for no, lost knowledge. Their flaw is they covet the loved one of a rival. Aw, sad. And their bond is a magical accident turned their village to stone, and they will stop at nothing to fix the damage. You should tie your handkerchief around your face. They say some of the townsfolk are breathing infectious demons. Good stuff. So this is really cool. I like the characters. Though, I, the only thing I would have said that maybe I would say in, in I don't know how this generator set up, how, how much it has, but I would like, 
a little bit about the proprietor and the staff as well as the guests, or maybe some kind of separation. These seem like they're guests. The human, librarian, dwarf, roadmaster, and elf athlete. I'd like a little bit to know to who's running the joint. Who's running the joint? And then I think what would be something else? So who's running the joint would be good to know. And then also, is there some connection, anything? You know, is it just a simple tavern? Just like hey, this one has a secret dungeon. Did anyone have uh, maybe connections to taverns? Maybe that's a little bit asking too much because then it gets more into stuff that's going to be too specific. But it might be neat. Maybe more little information. And I'm in between spindrifts. I'm finishing off a orange spindrift for the working man. And then I'll, depending on how thirsty I get, I might have to go on to pink lemonade. Spindrift. So really cool. So that's at the herebetaverns.com. There's some premium. What does that mean? Prep faster with our very best generators. Click any premium generator, see a demo. You get one-time payment, lifetime access. So that's 30 bucks. Let's take a look at one of these, some of these. This is, we're here. Why not avail ourselves of the services? Let's see their encounter generator. This one's called Nervous Monsters. Mythalabe and one bandit captain stalk the urban streets. I don't know what a mythalabe is. Goals and tactics. If the party tries to avoid this, there's a 20% chance they succeed. And the threat is heroic. What does that mean? Levels 5 to 10. Heroes of the Realm. Okay, so these... Uh, I guess, I don't know if these are so... Um, these might be 5th edition centric, maybe? I, do, I like the goals and tactic, tactics, but I don't like that particular goal. <laughs> if the party tries to avoid this, there's a 20% chance they succeed. Well, aren't you gonna... Don't you want to... Uh, Wait and see what they're planning. I mean, you know, because it doesn't take into account any kind of context. <laughs> you try to avoid it, it's twenty percent chance to succeed. Okay, so so let's we'll see. Let's just break down what that means. All right, so we're I don't know. I don't. I, I, you know, especially in fifth edition terms, I, I don't know. Five to ten. All right, so we're levels five to ten. We're somewhere in there. Let's say our wizard's got. I, I don't know. Mass teleport. I don't. I don't even know if that would or, or teleport self. Let's say it's a lone wizard with a teleport spell. <laughs> Uh, and they, they they run across a mythalab or mythalabe and one bandit captain stalking the street. And they're at 90 feet away. And I don't know if the, I don't know what a mythalabe is. Let's just say there's no missile weapons. So the, they see each other. The, the nervous monsters yell out something and start to charge. The wizard casts teleport to somewhere far away or somewhere away. Is there only a 20% chance that they escape? What happens in the what happens if they fail that twenty percent chance? Did the the turn out that the mythalabe and the bandit captain also have teleport going to the same place? I mean, I, I know of course I know that your general context should override. You should never default to this if you have reasons like, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense anymore. But it's just a weird weird thing to say. Have I would much rather have something like here are some things you can do. Here are their goals, right? They're open, you know. For example, so we say okay, goals and tactics. Instead of saying there's a chance they can avoid it, which is just very basic and doesn't really, doesn't really give it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really make any sense because we're going to want to look at stats and things for like that. If it's a run, if it's a chase, we're going to want the stats or something. I imagine we're going to want all these fictional contexts. At what point would it just come to the party just saying, I, I try to avoid it. And then we roll a D 100 kind of thing. It's, it, probably not because as a GM, if, I hope if they say I avoid it, that the next thing you're going to say is. How do you avoid it? And then that gets in. So at no point I, I I could I feel confident saying probably I would never rely on that particular goal and tactic, which means it's it's useless to me. It's worthless. Instead, if their goals or their tactics is hey they're gonna try what they want is money, so they're gonna try to lean on you for money, threaten you, get you to pay them off. These are the things they want. Then that gives me some I can something I can work with. It gives me something the party the angle the party's party can take. It does that. It's a lot more. And I don't even need really the 20% chance. I really just want, okay, they're going to try to threaten. They're going to, they're going to want to get money. And if this is kind of fifth edition centric, then you could put in DCs for various checks if you want to, but I'd much rather have that than just, if you try to avoid it, there's a 20% chance you succeed. Uh, what, what does that mean? It doesn't mean much. Let's see if the next one is an improvement. Oh, and it does say fifth edition. That's cool. 
I wonder if this means if, if you have the premium one that you could set it for. Let's look at one that's NA. This is called indigestion for a dungeon. A planar butterfly accidentally consumed a dub's container and suffers from mysterious side effects related to the magic item. Secret, if they slay it, the party can recover the magic item from the monster's stomach. Goals and ta tactics, the beast's actions are erratic because of its strange illness. It may rapidly switch between passive and aggressive. All right, and that's a basic one. Okay. I'm not sure what a planar... It, I'm, I'm going to go look at the details of this one. I should probably look at the details. Let me go look at the details of this first one. I want Maybe they give us some more information. That'll be better. Okay, so the mythalabe is a large construct that's unaligned. Okay, and the bandit captain's a medium humanoid, non-lawful. And that's it. All right, so that doesn't actually help very much. On this indigestion... I see. We do get what a dub's container is. Excuse me. It moved through rock as if it isn't there. I know oh, this is cool. It's brewed from netherwort and blue mountain flower. Lasts for four hours. Has an has an alizarin color, and the side effects are it gives you the munchies. I don't know what an alizarin color is. I'm sure. Does it say? Can I define alizarin? A red pigment present in matter root used in dyeing. Well, there you go. So it's red. I, I like the specificity, but I'm wondering, maybe people who know that color get a really potent image from it, but other than that, I mean, it's a cool word, but if, if it could have just gone with red. All right, so nothing else here. These are pretty cool. I, you know, let's go look at some of the other ones. You know, I look at this and I go, if this is the, and I don't mean to be, oh, I've opened it up in another page. No, it didn't, it just, Oh, there it is. I got to go back that way. Oh, it took me back here. What? Let's look at towns. Let's look at towns. We get Eastridge, Mary's Falls, and Dillyton. Don't dally in Dillyton. Let's see. We'll look at Eastridge. <clears throat> A circus is coming to town. It's got a tavern, the jumping stone, leather worker, the plump ox, a great hall, gatehouse, shrine, dock house, and a mill. And there's a nearby landmark called the Buff Island. In this region, many of the inhabitants make their homes on small disconnected islands. The floating bridges can be moved around, allowing them to work around the strange shifting currents. That's cool. We can go to details. We get a map of the town. We get some more about, oh, we get some more of these things. So this is so this is nice. We get some nested information. So we can go that we have the jumping stone tavern. Are we gonna hit details and be able to hit that? Look at that. Oh, but interestingly enough, here we don't get the tavern menu and stuff. That's a little bit underwhelming. Or is it not an inn? Was the first place an inn? No, it was a tavern. Well, I like we get this. Come on, give us the rest of it. So this is where a little bit I feel like maybe they're going to do this in the future. But I think, given that you have the the generators already there, I I would I would uh, think that you would want to connect them together so that when you go to Eastridge, you go in the Jumping Stone, you actually get the whole tavern layout that you would if you had generated the tavern. We get a social space called the Great Hall. People cannot attend this place unaccompanied. And here you might find Liberty Schmidt and Josh Mervor. Who do you think you are? Says Josh Mervor. So this is cool. Oh, I like this. And you get a little battle map for Buff Island. It's a region. <clears throat> not, no, the, one of the things with all of these, I can't say, I do not know what their development what they're, uh, oh, the town maps are by Wadaboo. Okay, that's cool. So it's, uh, I guess, a collaboration, if you will. And the towns are de designed by Sword and Source. Wadaboo has a ton of stuff also. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. I think I was saying Asgard. I meant Wadaboo in terms of the connecting all the different generators together. Very cool. I wonder if they're. I wonder if these are all ones that were created, or if it's using an API to generate those on the fly. That would be the neato of the neato. I think you could just use some interconnectedness. I was gonna say before that the one thing with this, if you're gonna pay for the service, 
it doesn't seem to be a bad deal necessarily. I mean, all this stuff is, we're in a weird space for a lot of these kind of premium offering type things because on the one hand, it's a one-time price. And you think 30 bucks for development, that's not, that's not bad at all. I don't know, coming, coming from kind of the old school sort of universe that I am, $30 from this kind of tool is, is not terrible. And, you, you, you know, you're, you're, besides the kind of, well, you're supporting creators thing, it, it, you're fine. You're getting a number of generators. What, uh, what I can't see from this is yet, and maybe we'll see, is how active is this in, in development? Am I paying 30 bucks for this? Because I think there's, uh, there's definitely some meat left on the bone in terms of taking these things, they're taking the stuff that is existing already and just interlinking them a little bit more. Like I was just showing, hey, in that town generator, oh, it generated a tavern to go in that town. But yet when I go into that tavern from the town, I don't get all the information I would if I just generated a tavern. And I would think you'd want to clean that up and kind of link it all together in some way. I don't know, folks. You can tell me if I'm off on that. But this one probably won't have that problem because they are these are factions and and maybe and this was a limited view so it could be in the full view that i would get some of these things that i'm looking for that's another thing to consider i would hope that they'd want to put their best stuff forward to entice me to buy in and though they're not showing me a totally gimped version of those in terms of factions we just have some the order of the phoenix you know from harry potter fellowship of the ring the cobra syndicate so let's look at Order of the Phoenix. Mission is to stop the Death Eaters. They operate through powerful spells and camaraderie. To join, you must be a witch or wizard who attends Hogwarts. And they have their leaders are Bernie Quaresh, Ember Watson, and Frank Ghani. And their members are Lar and Nola, Roman Reddy, Ariana Amal, Crispin Barrow, Diane Cunningham, Mary Phelan, and 23 more. Well, let's see if there's anything else here. We get their leaders. I do like they put the pictures in here and they get their ideals. I like this. Set up with the ideal flaw bond for each one, one of these. I think that's good. We get their members, all have pictures. Very nice. And then we get their restated stuff. Oh, we get a chart. What's the chart? Oh, cool. Are these who they control or? I guess this is. To be like their mob setup. Who reports to whom? Very cool. Oh, wait a minute. Did I miss anything else from details? Oh, there was a short list. Oh, nice. Okay, these are all very cool. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say that one thing would be nice for here is some idea of their strength level, their power level. Are they operating on a global scale? Are they regional or local? And you could just use those terms. I would just like local. I don't know, 30 members, maybe they'll say regional. Or maybe, I don't know, depending on how you want to see these factions. Is 30 enough to be a power, uh, have influence over a region or just a, a particular locale? Locale maybe, you know, just being a, I don't know, a handful of hexes. Sebastian says, it's free for me to decide which department they work for. Yeah, probably. I mean, I could definitely ignore that chart if I wanted to, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, it's these are the things where they, they offer questions that I want answers to. So, for example, Frank Ghani, high up in the power structure, only has one underling. Do we get a sense from Frank Ghani? Oops. What he does? Is he like the spy master? What's, what do they do? They wear a trappers for a cloak. They would do anything to remain incognito. They are obsessed with gunpowder and they betrayed their best friend to gain power. Ouch. So they've got a little Sith organization there on the side, just the two of them. So interesting. And that might be nothing. What are the roles? All right. Okay. So Bernie Quarish is one of the leaders. They're a tiefling shepherd. So, but what do they offer to the organization? They're just kind of, they're just there. And they're a kleptomaniac. So maybe roles would be good. And then. I could see wanting to, you know, I'm already thinking about, well, if I was going to take that generator and kind of rejigger it a little bit, I'd probably want to look at the roles and that would determine how many people would be in it. Since maybe a spy master might have just a few people. And then if you were running, say, the muscle part or the guards or whatever you want to call them, the foot soldiers, then you might have a lot more people under you. Even if even though you and the spy master, you might not be high level in the spy master just because of what's going on there. And then someone else is, say, clerical or organizational they would probably have more people than the spy master, but less people than the soldiers kind of thing. Administration type dealio. 
Lisa Best, yes, says, this is a typical parallel structure that would be related to quality control. <clears throat> Usually would mean you could have them as a debugging line in the organization. There we go. Sebastian with the smartening us up on organizational hierarchies. So that's cool. And this is one of the pay ones. So if you want access to this one, I have, and I don't have a pay one. I'm just, I have no account here and I have no affiliation. I am just looking at what they're offering. Now we, oh, did we already do encounters? I think we did. What, which one didn't we do? Oh, that's it. I have some other stuff. I'm just, okay. Cool. That was, well, we started off on the, it's this is on the Here Be Taverns blog. Okay, collection. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you can make an account here and, and save stuff. Very cool. Okay. Which one is this? Oh, this is the house map generator. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. We're not going to get anywhere through those 18 today. So this is, we're now, in a, we started off looking at a tavern generator as part of a couple of generators under one of the items, bullet items on our list, on this, on the list we're working from. Now we get to a house generator. House maps, house size is a crook house. I don't have no idea what that means, but it sounds cool. Thatch cottage. Okay, so a cottage is just basically a one room kind of house. And then a crook house is a handful of rooms. What does no grass mean? Does it give us plain? Oh, okay, I kind of like that better, actually, just in terms of simplicity. But I like that you can, like that you can do it. And then it says there's descriptions. Okay, and this does have... Okay, so this has... Also has premium versus regular content. So this is kind of freemium, let's say. Freemium, freemium. No ads, more features for a buck. But then this one said $5 premium access for the house room generator. Okay. So on the free, oh, and this is also at kasoon.com slash dnd slash forward slash dnd forward slash house dash map dash generator. There's a bunch of different generators here. We're looking just at the house one. As I said, freemium looks like you can generate your house with furniture and everything gratis. But then if you want to generate descriptions, then you need to, that's a, a premium feature. I don't know if there are other premium features, but that's pretty cool. And then lastly, we have the proc gen. So this is, this is one of the Wadaboo ones. I think this is a newer one. What's Procgen Arcana? Oh, ooh. Looks like, is this all of, uh, this might be all his stuff? Well, I guess since we're here, this is at watabu, W-A-T-A-B-O-U dot github dot I-O. I think this is the one, and I was, I had mistakenly confused them with Asgar that has a lot of interconnectedness. Perilous Shores is a fantasy region generator with a scale of resulting maps ranging from an area around a single town to a small continent. While the maps are built on a hexagonal grid, the generator tries to be subtle about that underlying geometry. It was designed to produce hand-drawn looking maps, but now it's capable of displaying them in a variety of styles. Okay, let's open the generator. Okay, well, first thing... First, I really like the map and the style, but why is the compass rose covering up the key? Probably want to fix that. Is that always going to be like that? Is that the same one? It is the same one. Okay. Well, can I do a different perilous shore? How does that work? Why they gotta figure? <laughs> Wadaboo! Why don't you put the compass rose outside the main box if you can't figure out where to put it without cutting off your places? Vault of Fear, Sands of Illusion.
Conquest, the sprawling city is said that there is a dungeon under one of the city's taverns. Hey, we didn't, did we find that already? Are they working together? Because we just saw that. A rumor in one of the things that there was a dungeon. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was a secret of that one tavern. The Charlatan and the Wayfarer tavern that we did before had a, had a secret dungeon. And now, maybe that place exists in Dawncrest. We're, we're slowly putting it together. Ian says, should be able to turn that off or move it. Yeah, I don't see anything. Just looking at the edges of my screen. I thought there was somewhere you could zoom in on this stuff. Oh, wait. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right, so there, I guess I have, I guess I wasn't right clicking. Let's first, let's see, can we move this? Reroll compass. Okay, you can turn it off. And you can right, they really need a better, <laughs> better instructions, because I would not have thought to right click. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so we can move it. We can, or we can turn off the compass. Doesn't look like we can, I can't grab it and move it. I can generate different kinds of compasses, but can't move it, but you can at least get rid of it. But yeah, there. I, you know, it's one of those things where you could see that there's spaces here that are empty and it, I mean, it doesn't make sense all over the map. I would just maybe take a corner and just overlay it, something like that. Anyhow, it's not a super deal. We are able to move it. Now, see, the cool thing with all this, and this is the first time I'm into it, so, again, I don't have super special uh, knowledge. I'm, I'm looking at this for the first time, is you're supposed to be able to go in here and look at it in the different editors. So now, here we are in the, the city generator with... Can I zoom out? This is was minus or plus. That doesn't work. Here we do have a menu in the corner. What does menu do? Why is so here we have the city generator. Now I find city generators to be of limited use because I'm not generally running a city like I am a dungeon. So I'm usually not into the okay, you move left down the street, you move ahead, this or that. But they are neat to get the the big overall sense of place. It is I you know I, I like these kind of things. Okay, I can see here's some districts or neighborhoods. Here's how the main road goes through it. Here, this is the, the context between the place and the rest of the town. So most of the farming, this kind of farming area surrounding farms are over here. Here's a whole bar part of the town that's outside the walls, which is interesting. Some more farming here. There's another segment out here outside the walls and kind of where the main roads are. There's a castle up here. I, I don't know. I don't get anything. Can I zoom out? Am I zoomed in too much? No, it doesn't seem to be. I'm not. According to this, I'm not. Okay, I'm at 100%. So the one thing that I don't like, and I don't know what's going on, if it's me or if it's this, is I can't seem to move around the city. My roll, my mouse wheel's not working. Nothing's working. So there's stuff up here, and I can't see it which is unfortunate and there's no way for me to move it can i what's the reroll geometry what does that do doesn't seem to do anything um medium large Does now let me zoom in or out? It just makes things, see, zooming in or out just makes the, doesn't actually zoom me in out in the town. It just makes, I'm sure there's, there's gotta be something I'm missing into how I want to zoom in, but I'm not seeing it. If somebody knows, let me know. So the one thing I was going to say is there's a little bit of a readability issue here for me anyway. That one map, some of the stuff was jammed up against the top of the screen and I couldn't see how to get above it. Is that if I use arrows? I didn't even think these arrows, but they don't seem to be doing anything either. I mean, there's nowhere to arrow to here, but what about? Okay, I don't know. And I think that just the way that I, I I like the aesthetic that they have, but it's kind of hard to see some of these, especially when they're on on some of the lines and depending on the size. 
Well, you're, it's kind of hard to see that. It's what narrow horn over there by the castle. Okay, but you get good stuff. But the, the neat thing here is that you can do all this. We started the perilous shores, and something we're zoomed into this city. Well, let's see if we zoom into this dungeon. Does that do anything for us? We can yes, we can open that. Bam. Vault of Fear, the mausoleum of the Purple Emperor, is situated at a bend of the winding blood spear. Lately it was squatted by a band of pirates. Squatted by a band of pirates. I know they're talking about like you're squatting, but I don't know, it feels like that's too much of a modern modern phrase for what they're doing. Just occupied, I think. Lately it has been occupied by a band of pirates. I don't know. But it, look, I mean, the fact that you get this stuff is so cool. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I, I find myself uh, picking at certain nits on these. But, I mean, come on. This is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome in the browser. You can basically generate a whole area, generate multiple locations, and then zoom in and open open these things into, okay, the woods. So they don't have a, uh, they don't have a, a finer hex area yet for these regions. But, come on. I mean, that's pretty darn impressive. So you can go through all that stuff. And here we're going back to the... Oh, we didn't actually go back. So the generator that we originally started us on here was the mansion. So let's just take a look at it. Proc Gen Mansion. And we get to see it top down. Why is it raining? Is it? Yeah, it's the air. The graphic. Okay. And then we do get a floor plan. And also a blueprint. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, that's good. That's good. How do I get how do I get back to that? Okay. Was that the blueprint was for that for me to do? Maybe the blueprint was for me to fill in. I don't I don't understand. What if I just make some weird I don't know what I'm doing with this. Oh, well look at that. Brian, Brian Smith says uh this is a cool one. Make some Overlook Hotel looking buildings. Yeah, we need some, uh, <laughs> need more, uh, you know, impossible, uh, what was it? Impossible architecture, like in the, in the Overlook. Overlook Hotel, I, I from, you know, the Shining. But that's pretty neat. I, I It needs some better explanations. And then we get second floors. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of giving us the, man, that is, that's pretty that's really cool. It just could use some better explanations, but you're free to. Oh, let's see. That's really awesome. But how do you get out of here now? Let's go back to 3D view. Oh, look at that. It even changed the shape of the house. Come on. Come on. That's pretty neat. I can get some shadow. What kind of style do we get? We could get colors. Walls, roof. All right. We've got uh, what's northern? That's northern. We got southern. And then central. Very cool. <laughs> yeah that's pretty neat pretty neat i think i think the thing is i think if we've discovered anything about these wadaboo generators is you're going to really get uh what's the word i'm looking for mileage you're, or you're gonna really if you want to get the most out of it, you're really gonna want to delve into these and these menus are right click by the way there, there's no menu i don't you know my camera covers up a little bit of my screen and there's nothing here so you have to know that you come in here right click you're just going to have to go through and, and check out some of these features by just like I did, just experimenting. Otherwise, you may have maybe missing stuff. You have no way of knowing. But that's very cool. 
So actually, instead of going here, really the link you want to go to to check out all these is just wadaboo.github.io. And then it gives you access to all the generators. And then did we look in the city? One thing I want to check in the city. I think we're able to go into that. So one thing I didn't do, so let me just do this real quick. We're in Palag Town now. So we're in Rat Shade. Can we go there? Uh, doesn't look like we can. I thought maybe it would let us go into, oh, if we can rename it. Add landmark, reroll ge geometry, new city, generate settlement. Okay, so it doesn't let us go that way because there is, we, there is a, I guess it's not connected yet. I keep accidentally leaving here. That's not connected yet, but we do have a, I'm gonna open this new tab. We do have a district does neighborhood generation. Amber Square. Okay, you can, that's nice. You can rotate. Got north, warm, cool, black and white. Let's go black and white. Oh, I like black and white. Just simplicity itself. <laughs> it says, export as an object and print your house. Yeah, you could. I suppose you could probably, there's probably a way to go from OBJ files to 3D 3D print files, right? Could you? Very cool. So that's the district. Now, could I go in here and just to go to a house? Okay, so they don't have the houses connected up, but that seems like a big task because it generates so many houses. And let's see, there's one other thing. We did, we did Rome, we did city, we did district, we did dungeon. Did we do village? We did mansion. Did we do village? Let's just double check ourselves before we leave. Here's the village. Chicken garden, population 55. All right, Wadaboo. I don't wanna blow your first year bubble here, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, well, I guess that's not too bad because nine homes, if you're averaging about seven people at a house, you're gonna get over to 55. All right, that's not as bad as I thought. First, I was looking at it going, how come you had such small houses with such few houses, you have to 55 people, but these are big families. Mark Clover said that uh, dungeon looked like a Dyson map. Might have been. It didn't say anything, but, you know, that Dyson style is very popular. So they could have just been. I don't know if it says. Let's see if they. I mean, gen these are generated dynamically, but they, yeah, they're definitely using. Oh, there you go. So Dyson hatching. It looks like you can change your hatching. Yeah, Fluffy the Griffin says most people in those days had like six kids. Yep, so and it makes more sense. Nine houses. It might even be how they're doing because what, you know, nine, nine times six, what, 54? So they're right, pretty much right on the money there. So yeah, not it, at first it looked weirder than it actually was. So that's the Wadaboo's Procgen Arcana. Arcana. Very cool. Check it out. How are we doing on time? So this was all just in day three. If you joined late, I'm going through these the days that have been entered in this 31 days of RPG map generators, which is posted by Duncan underscore chaos to the RPG underscore generators blog. I know they haven't finished yet because they're doing it all through July, but I wanted to jump in now and get through at least some of them. It looks like I'm not going to get super far, which is good. That just means I'll be able to do these a couple more of these. There are just so many generators out there, which is just crazy to think about. Here's something for the sci-fi folks amongst us. Some sp space sector maps. Got sectors. I'm just going to open some of these. There we go. First up is sectors without number. It's a sector generator. We can configure. I don't really know much about stars without number, which I'm assuming this this is based off of or, or emulating, I'm guessing, building off of generators from Stars Without Number. Let's just look. The sector is called Velit Kappa. Got a black hole right there. Deep Space Station Falun 8. There's refueling station Batos 3. Or maybe that's not a black hole. Where's the black hole? Is that a black hole? No, no save tags. Where were the black holes? Overview. Well, there's two. Oh, that is a black hole. Okay. 
Oh, we got a Simeida. It's got two planets. Variaga, it's a doomed world, altered humanity, and Baruker Erdia with immortals and the mandate base. Well, if the Griffin's looking for more sci-fi and post-apocalyptic generators, there's so many medieval fantasy ones. Yeah, it just kind of goes with the popularity, I suppose, but this looks pretty cool. Fluffy the Griffin, if you're, uh, I don't know if this matches the kind of style of sci-fi you're looking for. Have you checked out Gamma World and some of those, even the old ones? They And uh, they must have, I mean, Gamma World, I feel like is a good stand-in for post-apocalypse, because I think that's kind of what it was trying to model in its own way. They might have some good generators for you. At least stuff on, I don't know, the mutations and things like that. Very cool. I don't know what else. So that's the... So you get the systems. Two black holes. You can edit. You can export. Very nice. And this was at sectorswithoutnumber.com. Sebastian says, I always wonder why space exploration maps are always 2D. Yeah, I, it's a big problem, but I don't know what the good solution is until you until you just say that we're going to do away with paper and have something in either either holograms become a thing or you're using some something, some kind of interface where you can have full three dimensional move about. It just makes it makes sense as much as you kind of lose the thread on the the space itself and it's not just on this one plane but on a on a two-dimensional piece of paper how do you model it in a way that's more or less easily understood just it's hard it's the best is like 10 floors of 10 by 10 maps yeah that's just kind of unwieldy that's just a lot you're asking someone to put in a lot of work for probably at this level minimal you know does it really matter if zero 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 is not on the same horizontal plane as what's that one called? If oh, it's just grid is on the same plane as Kenomed in terms of anything, it doesn't really matter. You're going to, you're going to just go straight ahead and move around any objects in your way. So I don't know, you know, for, for other things, I think it makes more sense. If I was doing space combat, I would want, I would you know, you'd want to model that kind of all those dimensions. You want, people want to do the whole Kirk maneuver against Khan, you know, where you, goes down and comes up and you know spock saying his thinking is two-dimensional the, the captain but outside of that it's i think the returns start to diminish in terms of what you gain versus what you have to do to get those gains Ian says best candidate for ar slash vr tabletop role-playing game yeah i mean i think definitely when you can get to ar and vr that stuff will be a lot better and it's the kind of thing that you hope and, and again, I have no, I say again, as I've said multiple times, I don't really have any experience with the virtual tabletop. So I have no idea if something like Roll20 or Fantasy Grounds is able to do things to handle that three-dimensionality of space better. Maybe they could do it. I don't know. So that was Sectors Without Number. Now we have another sector generator for Stars Without Number, simply called Stars Without Number Sector Generator. SWN emicron.com and let's generate a sector <laughs> the dave asks have i heard of tilt 5 it might be awesome for 3d gaming maps i haven't i'll have to check that out the dave i'll have to make note of that something let's all right i'll just i'll paste that there so i can check it out later So we have a sector, this one's split into tabs. So we've got a sector overview. Okay, clicking on them doesn't do anything except highlight the names. Did I just change the names of them? Oh, okay, so it's, that's a weird. I don't know if I like that particular functionality. Then we get the worlds inside. Get some nice tags, populations, a tab with NPCs, that's nice. I don't think the other one had NPCs or corporations and you get politics religions and aliens wow so i like this one a lot in terms of the details they they would be just nice if they had the other one had much better sector yeah, this worked a lot better just in terms of the 
the uh, interactivity and being able to bring, I'd, I'd like, no, I want to be able to pull that up, see which species there is, see that other stuff show up somewhere. I definitely don't want to click that. And then I move over to click another one. And then I've just switched the names of the worlds. So that's weird, weird and not good. Uh, let's see. Connor Gallagher says the foundry has an experimental 3d mapping mod module, but it's a paid feature. Ah, well, someday our prince will come. And Fluffy, the person says, Prokian B is right next to Helvetica 3. Nah, it's 14,000 light years away on the Z-axis. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would, that would totally happen. And it would be even fun to kind of do things like that. But of course, you know, you, since everything, most things in kind of sci-fi space, you know, it's computer, plot the distance. And, you know, so hopefully you, it wouldn't be telling you they're right next to each other on your sort of electro maps, hologram maps, if they really were far away. But yeah, that you could definitely run into something like that. So that was the SWN sector generator. I feel like that's those first two, the one before this and this one would really work well together. Like get all the kind of detail stuff from this one and then get the sector stuff from the other one. This is called the Zodani base, or that's the name of the website. It's a random subsector generator at zodani.space forward slash stuff, forward slash generators, forward slash, forward slash random dash subsector dash generator a thousand and one subsectors create random traveler subsector maps so this one is specifically for traveler we do get an image but it's flat which is fine i mean just i don't think these things yeah it doesn't a fixed map we do get a bunch of stuff i'm guessing this is all traveler stuff i have to go back and reread traveler it's been forever but we get names, we get locations, we get some kind of codes, and we get some other stuff. And then we can create some different types of styles. And then we get them as images or PDFs. And then some other stuff. Atmosphere fix. I guess this is all all uh all, I'm guessing this is all traveler, somewhat specific, which I'm just not into right now. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not well versed enough to get into. Uh, Plug the Grim says they like that you can get a general idea of what the planet looks like. Yeah, you get a little. It is kind of cool. And then you can there's I guess there's some website called TravelerMap.com that you can send these to. So that's awfully nice. And you can launch an editor. Oh, I I think okay, I think I see what happens is so. In this editor, you're actually editing the text, and then I'm guessing that'll update the map. So I'm not going to do that because I have no idea what those things do, but that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And that was Zodani Space, random subsector generator, specifically for Traveler, though presumably you could move it outside. And I guess since there's just a, I just got a couple of minutes left, so maybe we'll just take a look real quick at this Tilt 5. The Dave says, fortunately, most solar systems and galaxies are all going to exist on relatively flat plane. This has to do with the physics of rotational momentum and collision. So that's good to know. The Dave, thank you for that. Thank you for the smartening up, which works well enough when the shortest route between places is either straight line or a wormhole. Yep, cool. Well, I appreciate that. That makes things simpler. So here, a little bonus. Bonus, I only got a couple minutes left. And uh, it's rather than delve into something i don't know how long it's going to be let's take a look at tilt five which i guess is some sort of something next level gaming with tabletop holograms well, i guess this is more for video games oh all right well maybe i'm not as interested <laughs> then what, is the, what does the system do it's a holographic gaming system glasses are for projection the board is for reflection the wand is for direction all right developers well you could program something hey i mean the one thing is is i i guess that something like roll 20 or foundry or somebody i, I at least was it i think fantasy grounds uses is he use unity i think right the dave says the ar system for tabletop games everything looks like video games oh this has some meeples on it where are some i just want to see something that's actually tabletop -y. it looked like more like video games that kind of looks like it's a video gamey kind of thing, but maybe it's not. Oh, here we go. That's kind of cool, but and they're using hexes to 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 frame their images, so that intrigues me. 
I'll have to check more around into it. It's got kind of looks like Xbox almost sort of buttons on there, same sort of buttons. What's in the news? Bevler Spotlights, limited edition Kickstarter box, love letter to games. Gnarly Knoll, well, they've got some kind of fantasy RPG sort of thing going on. Cool, we'll have to look at this further, but thanks for sharing the Dave. I will check it out. <laughs> I love the group says, those look like Kanye glasses. And Ian says, Fancy Grounds has rebuilt their app for Unity. That's what I thought. So maybe maybe Fancy Grounds can, mer can do something with this Till 5 tech in Unity and get some holographic holographic uh, RPG stuff then. Very nice. Well, folks, we'll call this, we'll just call this part one of 31 days of RPG map making. We made it through <laughs> four days. At this rate, it will take us, it'll take us a while to get through all of them. But uh, good stuff The Dave says, going back to take five, it is their own system. The idea is that you could play VTTs using it and multiple people can play in 3D and from different locations. Nice. I'll have to look at it more in the future, the Dave. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'll need to get into there. It seems like it's a little bit too much to get through now, and I just don't have the time. But I will keep it on my browser, and I will come back to it. It is neat to know that folks are working on these things. Um, it'll be neat to see what folks do with it. Certainly, in in terms of uh, of games and and things. I mean, you know, things like D and D, it would be neat to have three dimensional space, even if you're on the ground, just because we want it we want to have vertical spaces and we want to show that verticality and have rooms with multiple levels that feed into it, you know, like, like a big meeting room with terraces or, or different, you know, a mezzanine and a, gr a ground level. And these all could be interacting and people could be flying and creatures could be flying and things could be whatever. And it's hard to do on a two dimensional plane. So anything that can make those 3d spaces easier to manage, which will, I think, encourage people to use them and to create stuff for them. I'm all, I'm all for um hopefully the hopefully this tech will work out but i'll, I'll start to follow it because it seems interesting uh tell spire but it's not a generator interesting the dave says we want the players to fear being picked up by a griffin yes indeed always let's see Oh, there's a tested video on this. They're playing a Baldur's Gate style game. All right, I'll check it. I've been, I've been, I've been actually watching a lot of Adam Savage's stuff on Tested recently. Uh, usually his stuff in the, I'm just fascinated by the work he does in in his, what is it, in you know his not his office but his stu his workshop. Really cool. I haven't really looked at the other ones with the other guy Norman, I guess is his name, but I'll check it out because seems seems neat. And then let's see. The Dave says, uh, whoops, don't. No. Yeah, what the Dave says, I feel like Tailspire system was neat, but it takes too long for me to make a map. I'll have to check it out. His cave, the Dave says, yeah. Cool, folks. Well, thanks a bunch for joining. Sorry I got the word out super late on all of this. Um, but it was fun. I will do more of these because there's a lot more to get through. And I'm really interested in discovering a lot of these because I hadn't seen them before. So, and I will check out Tailspire too. It seems really cool. And maybe if there's there and I can get access to some version of they have a free or something, I can get in there. Maybe we'll do something on that, depending on what it does. But folks, if you could give a thumbs up to the video on your way out, that would be awesome. If you found yourself in here and you're not subscribed and you feel like subscribing, that would also be awesome. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day or night whenever you end up watching or listening to this. Game on. Talk to you later, everybody. Bye now.